Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys the basics of using the Fusion page to create a node composition for creating special effects or titles. So this is what we're going to be recreating really quick. It's quite basic, but if we go to frame zero here and hit play, we can see it's a title with a little bit of an animation. There's a few elements here. First, there is a masking box here in the background that controls where this effect is going to show on top of the base video. We also have a text element and we also have a change to the background color. So these are several nodes that we combine on one page in order to create our final effect. So if you have any video clip you want to edit, just hover over it in the timeline, left click it, and then go over to the Fusion page that's right down at the middle of the bottom. So if you have any clip that you want to edit, just find its location on the timeline, move your timeline cursor roughly on top of it, and then left click it, go over to the Fusion page, and then you should be brought into the editor for that specific clip. So here you can see that on the left, we have media in on the bottom left, media out on the bottom right. So what media in is effectively what you get at the end of your edit or cut page after you've made your basic video edits. And note that it's only for the selected clip in the timeline. So if you have multiple video layers, you're only going to see one of those layers that you selected in here. Now to actually make anything interesting happen, you can see up here that you have a series of different nodes that you can add to this node graph in order to make stuff happen. Also, there is a lot of extra nodes that you can get into by right clicking somewhere on the node graph, going to add tool. And here you can see the full extent of the nodes that are built into DaVinci Resolve out of the box. Obviously, this is a pretty big rabbit hole to jump down. So we're just going to be covering a few of the basic nodes in this tutorial. So the first node I was adding in is a color corrector node. If we want to take the color in our background and have it shift towards something else, then we can click over here on the color corrector node. Now, if you want it to add directly into this chain, then you should have media one selected. So if you have a node that has an output connector, which is this white box here, feeding into another node's input connector, then the node that you click on is going to go between those two nodes if it's possible. So if I click on color corrector, you can see the media in is now feeding into the color corrector and then the color corrector's output is now feeding into media out. Meaning that before we get our final video image, it has to go through the color corrector and any changes that node makes to our video uh, before getting to the final output. So with this color corrector node, we can do pretty easy stuff like changing the hue of our video. So if you want to change the colors that already exist on the screen, just the saturated colors, then we can adjust the hue. You can left click and then pull on this hue circle in order to do that. You can see this just modifies the hue and the saturation as well. As an alternative, you can control Z undo that and you can bring out the tint and the strength by left clicking here on the center and just pulling this out in the direction you want. You'll notice one of the differences is that when we tint the video, that it is applying more to those areas which are just kind of white here. Then when we sh simply shift the hue over towards a more bluish color, you can see these trees stay very white. So you can change it to whatever color differences you want. I could even make it red or orange if I prefer. And once we have a color that we like for this video, we can use a mask to make this color correction only show up in part of our video screen. So generally, when you're creating a mask, you're going to want to use a shape node. So you can see a couple here, rectangle and ellipse being basic ones. You can also use a polygon or a b-spline if you need to create a custom shape. So I'll use a rectangle node. With the color corrector node selected, I'm just going to click rectangle. And you can see that Resolve automatically recognizes that we want to have a mask. And so it creates a node for the mask and it automatically feeds the output into the blue input of our color corrector. So a blue input is going to be a color mask node and that limits where an effect is going to show to the area defined by the mask, unless you invert it. So if we click the invert button, then that's actually going to mean it's going to show everywhere that the mask is not. So up to you what you prefer depending on your needs. So now with the rectangle node, I might want to adjust its width to stretch all the way across our screen. So that's very easy to do. We can just take the width over here and change it to 1.0 value. So that's all the way across the screen. And so if I go to frame zero, I hit play, we can see well, this mask node and the color corrector, they are showing over the duration of our video, but it stays static. It's not animated at all. 
So we can animate the mask in order to control where the color corrector is going to show, but changing across time. So if I go to frame, let's say 30 here, and we'll say that's where we want this uh, rectangle mask to be fully visible. So I'm going to keyframe the width there. That is this diamond on the right side, right about here. If you keyframe it, it turns red. And that means you're trying to animate the property in Resolve. Now to animate it, we need to create a second keyframe somewhere else on our video clip. So I'm going to go to frame zero here, and this is where we'll make the width zero. So as long as you've created one keyframe for animation, when you change the value again at any other frame, let's say type in zero here, then a new keyframe gets created automatically. So you can see zero at frame one or frame zero, and then it is 1.0 at frame 30. So it's just going to animate the value between those keyframes. So if I go to frame zero and I hit play, you can see our mask stretches over 30 frames, and that allows us to have a little bit of an animation going on. Now, if we want to add text to this composition, that's pretty easy as well. Uh, there are 3D text nodes if you want to delve into that, if you need 3D shapes and you want to render that onto a 2D video, that's all well and good. But the simpler node to use is Text Plus, which you can find over here on the left. And it is basically the same as the Text Plus title that you would find opening up the effects library on the edit or cut pages. But we can add it in as a node here where it basically gets included in the fusion process. So I'm going to click over here, add a Text Plus node. Don't necessarily have to have a previous node selected because uh, really we need to have this merge with everything down here in a minute. But for right now, let's make the preview window show this text node. So whenever you want a node to show, if you hover over it, there'll be these two circles and the bottom left hand side, left view and right view. So you can have a node show on the left or the right. You have two preview windows. So if we click the left view node, you can see it pops up over here. And the reason you would want to show anything but the media out is sometimes you want to see what it looks like at a specific step of uh, the fusion node process. So you could see what it looks like, let's say after you do the color corrector, but before you add the text in. So just the video with the color corrector, no text included. And that would be when you would just preview left view or right view over here. And then you would see the preview at that state. So for this left preview window, let's add in some text. So before I put in tutorial, let's take the text. I'm just going to put in nature here, something maybe a little bit more relevant to the image. We can also see the font open sans here. Uh, we can see its size relative to the video frame, 1920 by 1080 pixels. And uh, pretty much this is going to appear very small on the final media out. Note the media out one is previewing, but we don't see our text appear. That's because our text node it's not actually connected in this node sequence, so it doesn't get included in the final media out. We'll work on that in a minute. So with the text one node selected, make sure you left click on it. I'm going to change the font on the right side. So I'm going to change the font to any font I have installed in the computer. I like to use Baby Snowy. So we'll go ahead and use that. You can see the font updates here on the left preview. And let's ramp up the size so that it is going to be big enough on the screen. So now we need to combine all of the nodes before we get to media out. How you do that is you use a merge node. So with text one selected, I'm going to click merge over here, right about here. And when you do that, text one is going to feed into merge one. But there's one problem here that would be a little bit of a gotcha, which is that text one is actually linking into the background import. That's the orange import on a merge node, where really we need it to be the foreground or the green input. The reason for that is that the foreground shows on top of the background. So uh, for right now, I'm just going to take the color corrector and I'm going to make this the foreground, but that's going to be incorrect. And now let's go ahead and preview the color corrector on the right view. So I'm going to left click there. And as you can see, uh, nothing really changed because the text is hiding in the background, the video covers everything. So we need to swap these connectors. So I'm going to left click on the line here to break color one to media out because that's not going to be the final connector. I'm going to left click on the green line to break that connector. Oh, and then we can see the text pops up there in the background. But got to break that too. take text one, put that to the green foreground connector for merge one. And the color corrector goes to the orange background for merge one. Now we can see all of our nodes 
popping up there on the screen at once. I'm going to take merge one, feed it to media out, and let's preview media out once again by left clicking on the right view right about there. And then let's take the size here on the preview and make it fit to the screen, make it a little bit bigger. We go to frame zero. We can see the nature text shows under the screen. It's basically static at the moment. And when I hit play, the blue box is going to stretch across the screen. Really what's happening is the color correction is always there, but then the rectangle changes its shape and reveals more of the color correction to actually go through to the final output. So one last thing we can do here is to make the rectangle not only mask the color corrector, but also have it mask the text. So as you can see, the text one, which is just a text plus node, has a blue input. So we can take the output from our rectangle mask node and just also connect that to text one. So when we do that, the uh, rectangle is going to mask out the text. So if we go back over here to frame zero, we can see no more text. It's being hidden by the mask. If we hit play as the mask expands, our text is going to start showing on the screen once again. And that is pretty much the effect from earlier. One last thing you might want to add is maybe a little bit of softness on the mask. So it's not so obvious where it's at all the time. So if you click on the rectangle one node, and then we go to soft edge over here in the inspector, you can just add a little bit of this. And then when the mask is expanding, let's control middle mouse wheel, zoom in a little bit. Then you can see there's a little bit of softness here. So it might make the animation look a little bit smoother, as you can see with that soft edge. So now if we go back over to the edit page, we can see a preview of our video a little bit bigger. I'm going to go ahead and hit space and we can basically see our final effect. You might want to play it a couple times if the initial render is a little bit slow. And then when you go ahead and export, that's basically going to give you your final result, as you can see here. So the Fusion page is capable of a lot more than this. There are tons of nodes to explore, but hopefully this video has given you guys a good introduction onto the basics of how it works and an example of how you can combine a few nodes to get a pretty cool output. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see all of you in my future video content.